The Ghost in the Machine Right now, the question you must ask yourself is, are you a machine or are you the ghost in the machine? That is to say, can the essence of your being be reduced to a schematic? Or are you something subtler? How you answer that will determine how balanced you are in life. Your most basic attitudes and behavior will be changed by this belief. The outcome of the battle of machine versus psyche will determine if you have a soul. The phrase, the ghost in the machine, was first used in criticism of French philosopher René Descartes' idea of mind-body dualism, in which the mind and body are distinct and separable. For Descartes, mental phenomena were non-physical and might continue outside the body. In his scheme of the dualism of mind and body, information is passed through the sensory organs to the pineal gland at the center of the brain and from there to the indwelling spirit or soul, which is the ghost in the machine. The great mind-body debate raged on for centuries and continues to this day between the two opposing schools of physicalist materialism and mentalist idealism. The seeds of a solution to the problem of mind-body dualism began to emerge during the Enlightenment in the writings of Spanish philosopher Baruch Spinoza and Scottish philosopher David Hume. They suggested there was a single source substance to reality that is neither physical nor mental. This position is known as neutral monism, and it explains the brain-mind problem in terms of something more basic. This primordial substance, or field, is both transphysical and transmental, but those aspects merge in sentient beings to give a sense of psychophysical presence. The American psychologist William James used the term pure experience to describe the underlying source behind mental and physical reality. Pure experience describes a state of uncategorized awareness that has the potential to become thoughts or things. In this view, the essence of the personal monad is the pre-conscious mind in its purest state, free of thought. The Austrian physicist Ernst Mach, known for his studies in the speed of sound, believed the source of reality are neutral elements, which are neither mental or physical, but can enter into relationships that can be classed as either psychological or physical. But the unclassified neutral elements are the basic reality. Nobel Prize-winning physicist Roger Penrose believes that consciousness transcends formal logic, and any algorithmically deterministic systems, such as computers, cannot have intelligent awareness or mathematical insight beyond logic. Together with British mathematician John Lucas, he formulated the Penrose-Lucas argument based on the pioneering work of Austrian logician Kurt Gödel. Gödel proved that every theory capable of proving basic arithmetical operations either fails to be consistent or is incomplete. The inescapable conclusion seems to be, commented Penrose, that mathematicians are not using a knowably sound calculation procedure in order to ascertain mathematical truth. We deduce that mathematical understanding, the means whereby mathematicians arrive at their conclusions with respect to mathematical truth, cannot be reduced to just blind calculation. The rapidly evolving discipline of consciousness studies is an interdisciplinary effort by physicists, mathematicians, psychologists, philosophers, theologists, computer scientists, biologists, neuroscientists, linguists, and other scholars to understand human consciousness. Currently, they are divided into two camps, the dualists and the monists. Dualists believe in the opposing Cartesian duality of mind and matter. Physical monists believe mind arises from matter, while idealist monists say that mind is dominant over the physical world. Neutral monists posit a third substance that is the source of both mind and matter. As we noted earlier, British mathematician and philosopher Bertrand Russell believed that whatever is responsible for the dynamic physical structures described by physicists are also part of consciousness itself. This third substance was the source of both mind and matter. 
His ideas on this kind of neutral monism spawned two additional philosophical movements. Russellian panpsychism holds that consciousness is the fundamental, omnipresent feature of reality, while Russellian panprotopsychism says that each object in the universe has either a mind or an unconscious soul and that all physical interactions involve some form of consciousness.